Okay, you can't go sit over there. We'll be back when we finish then. There's no soapy there, love. What is up, guys, and welcome back to the One Night in Bangkok podcast. If you guys are new here, my name is Eric. I'm an American. I've been in Bangkok for five years now, and I'm meeting so many cool people in the city. I want to show you guys. Hit the subscribe button if you're new, and also if you're moving to Bangkok soon and you want all the inside info about how to get set up here, check out the private Facebook group down below. We're giving out lots of tips and info there, so you can check that out. Tonight, I've got a YouTube friend of mine, Johnny from Johnny. There's something happening on YouTube. Is here. Uh, we had an interesting day today. Do you want to tell everyone what we did? An amazing day today. <laughs> well, it was, a, it was fun. You 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 tell everyone what we did. Well, Johnny rang me up last week, mm. and he said, "Hey, I got to film a video. Can you help me?" I said, "What's the video?" And he said, "Oh, it's a new soapy massage place." I said, "I'm in." <laughs> so tell them what it's like though, because it's kind of unique. Well, the theme of the soapy massage shop is um, it's GTA themed, so it's Grand Theft Auto. Um, if you're familiar with the game, um, and it's called BKK Vice. Um, so it's all done like that neon lights, and you know you're walking down. And there's fake dollar bills, and there's gold billion, like fake gold billion, and it's just really like it's been done very well. Yeah, they they did a really good job, to be honest. It doesn't yeah. look cd at all it's it's really well done yeah so yeah it's not like your typical cd soapy massage parlor like it's been done like with a bit of class yeah um, as much as possible yeah, well, exactly. well i'll post the link to your video yeah. down below and people can go see it for themselves so yeah. and how did you find it it's fun it's fun the girls are fun yeah and uh yeah i don't know what else well, you, you normally shoot weddings don't you so you've gone from <laughs> wedding you've gone from you weddings know, to soapy we, massages just, when you first rang me up you were like oh can you help me and i was like okay and then when we got there now i'm like bossing all the girls around yeah, i'm like yeah. oh you get in the shower you get on the bed and i'm thinking why am i so how do i know what to do here but i you know i used to shoot a lot of weddings and i somehow i think that experience translated to <laughs> we've actually got a picture put that picture up of your uh I sent you a photo. Oh, of me shooting the girls? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, like I'll a, put that up. There's a bit yeah. of a behind the scenes. Yeah, a little uh, BTS action. But it was fun. Yeah, yeah it's the a girls, cool place. The girls are crazy. Yeah. Which is good for video. No, it's wrong. What kind of muscle? What kind? What? It is. Um, so, do you like have this kind of moment in your head thinking, like, how did I go from shooting weddings to now shooting soapy massages? Yeah, no, I definitely had a moment. Uh, you know, it's you know when I have those moments when outsiders are in the moment with me, yeah. and they're like, "What is going on?" Like, we had a guy, one of your subscribers there, <clears throat> one of my subscribers. I, I put out a call um, on my community YouTube page and on my uh, Facebook YouTube page, and I said, "Okay." attention all mongers if you want to take part in this soapy massage video we're actually we, we, we're not, we weren't going to film the guys actually getting the massage um that's just something that i don't really want to be attached to but um and in in both posts i actually misspelled my email address i actually put n i uh, m instead of n and there's only one guy that actually picked up so i'm, I'm sure there would have been other like subscribers out there that were trying to send me emails, but obviously it was coming back undeliverable. Um, but there was only one guy that actually worked out, you know, okay, and he spelled his email address wrong. And he sent me and he said, oh, have you still got any positions? And he was a great guy. Like, yeah, he's Dave, from Canada. He was from Canada and he was 60 and he was like the perfect monger. <laughs> Customer. Casting. Yeah, it was like yeah. the perfect casting. We, we saw his face when he came downstairs after he was done. <laughs> was I thought it was like, I said, are you okay, mate? <laughs> Do I need to call you an ambulance? <laughs> I offered him Viagra before he went in there. I said, you want some paracetamol? Yeah. Um, but he was, a, he was a great guy. He was a really good sport. It was, it was a fun day. Yeah, yeah. So then we went to, uh, we finished that. We went to the new Gigi cafe restaurant place on the corner here. So Gigi is the same owner as where? Sing Se with Sonia. It's uh okay. So um, 
So it's got Sing Sing and it's got a few other restaurants. Okay. But G- it's good it's good Italian. Yeah, Gigi is like a little Italian, not super expensive, but it's a it's a nice place. Yeah. And they've got one on Soy nineteen. They've got one next to Sing Sing Theater. And now they just opened one in Ekamai near mm. us here. So we checked that out. Opened about a week ago. That's good, right? That was good. And uh, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while because you live like three hours away. Mm. So whenever I, we can make this happen. I try and keep away from uh because last time I was here, we did a podcast with the two girls. Yeah, so you were the first. That's oh. what we were talking about. You were the first one. And thank you again, because now it's growing yeah. and things are going well. Yeah. And uh, I was saying, like, just even the setup in here has changed a bit since you came. Like, when we first did this stuff, if you guys go back and look at the first episode, it looks like, like, quality. The, the content was good, but the quality was kind of dog shit, right? No, I thought it was fun. And since then, I figured a lot out, and then we... we uh, we fixed that. So. Well, it's a learning curve, isn't and it? And then we got the board back here. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. These are all the, the guests. Uh-oh, who's this? The girlfriend? <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. Do you want me to bring her up? Yeah, yeah. I can get her. So, uh, Eric's going to come and get you. <laughs> yeah, just say. So, can... Wait, sit down. Oh, no. Come uh, come close to him here. Yeah, yeah. This camera can see. Uh, uh, no, no, no. So just, just, so just make an appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> So, this one this one uh okay all right we just had okay a, so we'll just rudely interrupt it there some no no okay that's going some again. just arrived so we had to go let her in and, some, and then we'll go again what uh what we'll go again we'll start again are you filming yeah oh, okay yeah. <laughs> well, let all right. me start let me start all right. all right some just arrived johnny's girlfriend so we had to go down and get her some what do you think about your boyfriend filming the soapy massage <laughs> you trust him actually yes he's he's very good he's very good there well behaved very well behaved wasn't yeah. right? and so are you of course <laughs> <What's that? laughs> <laughs> no, i'll be more no, worried no. about that <laughs> you want to smell that put your head between there okay <laughs> you can't go sit All right. we'll be back we'll be finished <laughs> then <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no. No. there's no soapy there love don't worry <laughs> <laughs> what does it even smell like? I well, don't even I don't know. know. Don't want it smells to know. like bleach. What's yeah, that? they had when we we're at the the place. They have like a a cleaning woman <laughs> that just waits for the customers to be done. Come and cleans the sheets, and out. then she goes and cleans everything, and it just smells like bleach. Ble- yeah, like sterilized. Well, I think so, it, I think if you run a kind of um, like a business like that, it has to be clean. Yeah, like, yeah, you can't, yeah. Can't be leaving sheets and towels. No, no, the, the place was immaculate, I have to say. So, anyway, what were we saying? <clears throat> so, I haven't seen you in a while. You're down in Hua Hin. Mm-hmm. My friend just left. First time in Thailand, I was telling you. Yeah. And I think if he came to live in Bangkok, he'd be in big trouble because he was for three weeks. Yeah, from it was what you've n- told me. Nonstop kind of... action. So, what happened in Bataya? Well, here's what happened. We were supposed to go Apache, to. Yes, we, sorry. we were supposed to go to Phuket. And but we didn't book the flights yet. We we're very delayed. And then I realized, oh, it's Chinese New Year. It's going to be a complete mess in Phuket. Yeah. So I said, why don't we go somewhere else first? Like maybe Pattaya, just hang out, whatever beach. You know, we'll go to the bar. He he didn't know anything about Thailand. He knew absolutely nothing. Um, he didn't know go, what a go go bar is. He didn't know anything about Pattaya. I told him, do yourself a favor and don't look anything up about this place. So we went down there and we were there for, I think, four nights. And it was just out every night partying 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. around and then sleeping, partying, sleeping. It was rough for a few days. So it was his first time in Thailand? Yeah. So he wasn't, didn't know what to expect? Not at all. So he kind of took him by wind kind of thing? I think he was just in so such shock about what it's like here and not just the bars, but you know, the people, the weather, the everything, the food. I, I, if you don't know anything about Thailand, like I didn't five years ago, really, I just showed up and I as soon the first day here, I said, oh, I've heard things from people like they're in love with Thailand. I had no idea why. Yeah. And within a day I, I understood. So yeah. And so you think he will return? Well, he's back on the plane right now, and before he boarded the plane, he texted me like he's like depressed. I was proud. Oh, that's, yeah, before he even gets back. That's not especially being your first trip. He's going back to a very cold, boring town. Oh, here we so go. wait till he gets home, and the reality kicks in. And yeah, I think he'll be we back should, next week. I think we should. I think the over/under is going to be like three months. Let's see. 
So he's told me he's going to the Bahamas next in May, but I'm picturing his reaction like, why? Why go to the Bahamas where you can go to Phuket or yeah. Samui or wherever, you know? So. Oh, good. Yeah. And his my other friend, which is also his friend, yeah. previously came, was on this podcast and married a Thai girl. The first, basically the first Thai girl he met really? in Bangkok on oh, the first wow. night, he Got married it. her. So he, we all know each other. So I think he understands now how that happened. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And what happened? Did, did he play up? Or did he get in any trouble in Pattaya? Did he or? get in any trouble? I was a little nervous. He was, he was riding. I had, I, had, I had to have a talk with him on the second day. Like, look, I want you to have fun. Yeah. But we got to scale it back like Behave yourself. 10%. Like just ten <clears throat> percent, yeah. Because uh, you have to; otherwise, you can, it can be quite dangerous. Yeah, you know, and if you because you think you're invincible, and you know if you go to grab the wrong girl, and you know she's attached to some, you know, yeah, mafia exactly. boyfriend, and then you're getting a mai tai kick to the head, and yeah. And I think for like those of us that have been here for a while, we can be in a bar or out, and we can recognize oh. This person is this kind of person. Yeah, exactly. This person is that yeah. kind of person. They're all the same to him. He yeah. has no idea. Well, he's walking in blind, really. Yeah, yeah. So that was good. But, uh, you know, I thought if he lives here, he's got to go somewhere like more chill, like, I don't know, Chiang Mai or Hawaii or something, because Bangkok is not for everybody. It's no. just, it's too much. It's because it's around the clock, you know, like madness. So what happens if he went to like somewhere like Pratong? Probably, so we did. We wanted to go, but it, then we we didn't end up going because then it was like a Thai holiday weekend, yeah. and flights to Phuket were ten thousand baht round trip, really, which is insane. That's and crazy. the hotels were crazy. So I just yeah. said the next trip. What I want to do with him is I want to rent a boat, like a sailboat. Yeah. Get like eight people. You can come too. You yeah. want to come? You and yeah. some get like eight people, three days, two nights around yeah. Phuket. Just go wherever. Yeah. So I think that would be a really epic experience. Yeah. That sounds good. Oh, that's good. And uh, how did you know him? Was he been like uh, just through friends in in Boston? Yeah, we call him Boston Dan. God, half of Boston will be in Bangkok soon. With I'm you. surprised more people haven't come. They see on Instagram, and people message me sometimes, like, "Where are you? Like, or is this real? What is yeah. this? Like, I just I posted some clips from the some videos from the Sophie massage place today, and the oh, girls okay. are like throwing money in there. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I offered him to come on. Was that the same guy? I offered him to... And, yeah, yeah, but he flew out. And yeah, yeah, you know what's weird? He was very... I think he was kind of nervous about the idea anyway. So I don't know if he would have been the best. Okay, it would have been a lot more tame from what the, I hear. The he person got you got, I think, was a, a better fit. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, good old Dave. The 60-year-old manga. <laughs> it was perfect casting. I'm like, and I saw him, I saw him like at the BTS and he's got like gray hair and I, I went, oh, perfect casting this. And he was a really nice guy. Yeah. And it, it, he was too, he's like first time ever having a soapy massage. Um, and funny enough, everyone must think that I've, I've never had one. I don't know. Me either. Go. I honestly haven't, no. Um, I don't know why. Um, but I've never had a soapy massage, but they do sound fun. But I, I'm not really into... I don't know. I've got people like sliding up and down on you. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Maybe someone might give me one tonight. Yeah, we'll get now. you the uh, whatever they, you know, in, in when, when we were there, I don't know if you noticed, they have like a supply basket they get before they go to the room. Oh, it's like got condoms. And well, I don't know. I mean, it has like oil, like you know, all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Viagra. I bet if some walked in with that little basket, you'd be down. Oh, yeah. I'll probably have a think about it. <laughs> But um, I, it's like all soaps and stuff, isn't it? Or, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It's like, yeah, it's like a. I don't know what it is. It's like a toolkit. How do you uh, how do you come up with these ideas? Because like your channel is kind of unique. Dave was telling they, me they this. approached me. Yeah. Um, they came because I've actually done a few massage videos, and they do really well. Um, but there's a there's a borderline that I don't cross. Like I don't want to film, um, you know girls on top of guys i don't want to like what happens behind closed doors i want to keep it that way but i also want to set like a make the viewer kind of imagine what yeah, it could yeah. be like i think i think that's more i think that's more interesting to watch as than just watching two people just go at it do you know what i mean like mm. it, uh, the imagination makes people curious i think you know yeah. i think it makes it a bit more exciting yeah that makes sense do you have any like long term video like projects coming up? Like we had talked about an idea. Not really. We don't, no. we don't. Um, 
I've got a few ideas, but um, I'm just kind of winging it at the moment. Um, I'm not sure. Last time we were here, we had just started the cooking channel, I think. Is that, that correct? Uh, it was a few months old, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a few months old, but that's really taken off. Like, So we've got nearly 45,000 subscribers now. Um, so that's keeping us busy too. So um, look, I, YouTube's such a fickle thing that you just kind of, you can't really plan for it. You just got to, you know, I know a lot of you other YouTubers, are, you know, they've, They've got whiteboards and they've got like video ideas and stuff. I've got that too, but I think you've just got to leave yourself open. Like today, that Vice, uh, BKK Vice, they actually approached me um, a few weeks ago. Actually, it was about a month ago. And we set a date, then th something came up and we had to change it. And But it was always... Uh, so what excited me about that video was the whole GTA theme. Um, you know, the new games coming out next year. So it's a, it's and it's it's got a huge following that GTA. Like I think every single male in the world plays it. I I think yeah. I used to play it. Yeah, Vice City was my jam. Yeah, back in whatever year. It's just one of those. It's like Mario Kart or you know uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. It's just one of those games. So I think, and I think that's quite smart of them to actually go for that theme because everyone can relate to it. And it's like oh, going to Bangkok to GTA massage shop. It's it all kind of seems like work it all, you know, fit all in. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, like Bangkok is the, like the Wild well, West. This, we were talking earlier, like there's so many people making videos in Bangkok now. Yeah. It's hard to do something interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, back, back during COVID, I think it was a lot easier to stand out. Even doing, you know, I remember during COVID, there weren't many YouTube people here. Like there was Chad, who you've got his shirt on right now. His oh, yeah, cream, cream pie, pie shirt. If you want uh, yeah. some CB merchandise, head over to CB Media. Yeah, but now he's not even doing uh, like Thailand stuff, just motorsport nah, stuff. Nah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's just totally motorsport now. Yeah, I don't blame him because like that's a really unique. Well, that's his, that's his niche. That's, yeah, but there's um, not, there's, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really into that, but doing like the travel motorsport thing around Asia, that's really unique. So yeah. And he's uh, doing really well. I think he's getting like 800,000 so oh, wow. subscribers. So yeah. he'll be hitting a million soon. But, you know, Chad just, he just knows it, doesn't he? Yeah. And I, know, yeah. And I think someone like Chad, like he knows his niche and that's, you know, motorsport and stuff. So once he starts doing like Thailand content, like motorbike tours or something like that, YouTube don't really know where to put him in the algorithm. So is he a thailand vlogger or is he a thailand traveler yeah, or is he sense. a motorsport guy so that's why he's he's you know he's concentrating on motorsports now and it's it's really paying off for him so so good luck to him yeah and you had chris here not so long ago hello yeah. chris if you're watching a good friend of mine chris parker he was here a few weeks ago i yeah. got a lot of good feedback on that video a lot of people said something along the lines of honestly i really didn't like that guy but then when i heard him talk on your podcast I, I like him much oh, he's more now. He's a great guy. He's, he's much. He's very genuine. He's a really lovely guy and so clever. Like, you know, he's got a background of filming and stuff. But if you just watch some of his productions, like the amount of effort he goes to, and like the giving it, uh, paying it forward and that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but and and what makes it better is he's a great guy, like a really lovely guy. So, you know, he's got no attitude. It's not like, you know, some other YouTubers that are like, oh, look at me, look at me. But no, it, was, it was a good video. I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, he's super positive and he has no problem coming. You know, I don't, nobody gives a shit about who I am. But yeah. he was like, oh, yeah, I'll come check it out, whatever. Yeah. Um, I met him at one of your meetups. Yeah. Your, you had a meetup event a few months ago. Um, there's a lot of interesting people in the city, though. I mean, but, you know, like we were also talking earlier, sometimes people just... They only are nice to you if they can get something from you. Yeah, I think that's kind of like normal, isn't it? Around... I, for anything, yeah. But but it's mainly highly concentrated in Thai, like Bangkok, I think. But Phuket can be like that too. I don't think I could live in Phuket. Like, uh, have you seen this girl? Um, she's not Russian. She's from Latvia. And she complains about like the Thai women and how oh, yeah i think i've got a window her. we like, were the one of the last shows we were talking about her so basically she I, came to thailand and she was making a channel just about like living in phuket yeah but then uh 
slowly it started to transition to her like complaining about the dates she's been on and this guy and there's no serious guys and whatever and then the big jump off was when she made a video complaining about thai women and how basically they're all easy and they're not educated like western women uh, and why I, would you do that and it went viral all yeah. over social I, media I do remember hearing something about that. and uh she went back to europe and then i saw she was coming back to thailand so i messaged her and I said, hey, would you come on and, you know, we can chat. And I told her, like, we're, you know, to be honest, like, I think we definitely disagree about a lot of things, but we can, you yeah. know, it'll be fun, whatever. Which, which is controversial. Yeah. And I, I wasn't trying to trick her. I told her straight up, like, we're probably, you know, this is going to be a little debate. Um, and she said she would come on, but then she was like, oh, can we do it through video? And then, no. then I was like, no. And then she's like, well, I'm not going to be in Bangkok. And then I was going to Phuket. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like, we can do it in Phuket. So what would you do with all the setup? Take it with you? I, would, I don't know. I'd take some stuff. But then uh, she was like, well, she's like, to be honest, I don't do anything for free anymore. Oh, I, I, she's like, I, she, her quote was, uh, <clears throat> I feel like I bring more value to other people's channels oh, than they bring to yeah. me. So I was like, she's got tickets uh, on herself. See ya. And how many, you know what I mean? Didn't she like, was that the one that said that all, all foreigners are like pigs? Because they just come to Thailand and they just don't. She, she, I actually wrote down like ex specifically what she said because I was doing research for that video. She said that all the guys that come to Thailand yeah. are either losers back home. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're, uh, they've got mental problems yeah. or they're cheaters. Okay. It has to be one of those three. She tried to walk some of it back, I think, in like later videos. But I don't know. She felt pretty strongly about this do thing. You, so, Do you think she did that to be controversial to try and increase viewership? No. I think what happened was, and this is just my opinion, so whatever. Leave it in the comments below, whatever you think. I think she's in her mid, maybe late 30s. I think maybe she's a little frustrated Which with the dating market here. It's not intimidating. I just think she's not very nice. And I think especially culturally, she doesn't fit in here. And guys don't take her seriously. No. Well, guys probably aren't interested. I think in Europe, maybe she has a better well, leg in the She's got a bit of pool there, but when she comes yeah, here... Yeah, there's no chance. So... I mean, you know what it's like here. There's like 50 year old guys dating 25 year old models. Yeah, it's that's like, right. Yeah, um, depends. So, so maybe she felt threatened by the Thai girls, and that's. And I, yeah. I think she made one video, like a throwaway video. Yeah. And then it went viral. Thai woman, well, a Western woman like me, Thai woman is easier. Okay. And then she's done so many reaction videos. Yeah. Since then, I wouldn't be surprised if she clipped this and made oh, a reaction okay. out of it. Hello. So, Bitch. But um, but you know what she does though? She copyright claims you. Oh fuck that! Yeah. Okay. So Dang. whatever. But I invited her on. I still invite her on. I yeah. don't agree with her, but I know I'm down to talk to so her. You'd, so you, what? So you be like a bit of conflict with her or no no conflict with her whatsoever i just reached out and said no no but if you had her on would you kind of yeah, like well, would I you would ask address her. a few well here's the thing it's one thing to say something dumb yeah. but it's another thing if someone like back pushes up. you on it yeah. you know why do you think this what experience have you had yeah so yeah oh but we had we had a few girls on um recently that were chatting about they couldn't stand this girl because yeah. you know they're normal normal thai girls like one is a nurse i don't know what the other one is and you know they went to college they work hard they learn to speak english so when someone basically comes to your country and like insults your entire country i understand yeah 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 i mean not like not everyone in america is great there's a lot of not so great people but i wouldn't be like every american guy is this or that you know yeah. so I don't know. I think some people on social media sometimes do that to try and get a reaction. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, and they try they, they try and say something controversial to, to like that, to that guy and that Swiss guy in Phuket at the moment. That, that's a huge story in, in, in Thailand at the moment. Um, the guy that kicked that Chinese doctor. I mean, the Thai doctor. Yeah. So, but what happened? This this woman was <laughs> sitting on his steps or something. Well, this guy he runs like an elephant park in Phuket. A Swiss guy with his Thai wife, and they've got they rent a they rent a property in in Phuket, and they say it was a million baht a month rent they're paying or whatever. But um, illegally, well, they've they've built illegally stairs that back down to the beach, so people that are walking past the beach. Maybe you see these stairs and they, you know, there's cement stairs. So they probably think, oh, it's public land or, um, so these two Thai doctor, uh, a Thai doctor was sitting there with a friend, 
uh, they just have dinner at a, at a nice restaurant not too far away. And uh, they walked down the beach and they said, I'll just sit down. And they walked, it was that big Buddhist holiday that we just recently had that night. And um, they were just sitting there and all of a sudden he he walks up and he just kicks her in the back. And, you know, she's you know, 26 or something, but she's a, she's a tired doctor. And like, he's fuck off, fuck off. And then, uh, and it's just escalated, like, because, and it, the worst thing about that is it, it gives us foreigners, like, there's a lot of Thai people, like, I know some, for example, we were talking about last night, they want this guy kicked out of the country. Yeah, what I noticed since living here is that if someone from some group, whatever group, yeah, white, black, American, Chinese, whatever, does something bad, yeah. now the opinion of that whole group yeah. is changed. Absolutely. So I can, I, the guy, this guy was Swiss, but Swiss. he doesn't really matter, you know, whatever, no, white yeah. guy. But now, you know, now they're calling for like saying, that, you know, there's a big mafia in Phuket with the Russians and stuff now. And, you know, uh, people are going to turn against foreigners now just because there's one, one asshole did something stupid like that and you know what people don't uh, rem- what people don't understand is that we're visitors here you know we are visitors in this country and uh you know they can throw us out whatever time whenever they like really so apparently they're talking about canceling his visa saying, and i hope they do because then it's gonna you know it was set they're gonna make an example out of him yeah so when you know but uh you know it's a what a stupid thing to do and especially like he runs like a well i'm surprised he did something like that and he lives here because he shouldn't he should know But not only that he's got like one of the biggest elephant centuries in phuket like an elephant century so now they're looking at his business and they're saying well how are you involved in a charity um you know so they're probably going to go just by doing something stupid like kicking a poor woman on because she was sitting on the back of your stairs and it was actually on public land it wasn't on like they're gonna go ring we're all now i i think his visa will be cancelled so mm. it's gonna be interesting to see mm. so yeah when uh when someone visits here what do you think they need to know if they're a first-time visitor like my friend <clears throat> um like culturally oh they're so just just behave here like you'd behave back home really um, there's a few serious things that you could like, you never touch someone's head or, you know, there's a few cultural things that, you know, you never show your feet or you never, you lose your cool. You never abuse anyone or raise your voice. Well, yeah, my friend, American from yeah. the Northeast, you know, US, very loud. Yeah. And likes to like point a lot. And oh, this yeah. And so that's... I'd be like, just mm. take it so down no a little. Pointing. Because I, I get it. Where we're from, totally normal. No one cares. But yeah. here, you stick out like a sore thumb. And yeah, yeah people react to it. But, like, but you know, it's, it's weird because there's so many, there's so many videos. I've actually done a video on like do's and don'ts when coming to Thailand. I actually did two of those videos. And they actually did quite well. Um like the, the people can just research before they come, before they jump on that plane, just type in a Google, what shouldn't I do in Thailand? And it's, it's pretty common sense stuff, really. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not anything serious. I think alcohol causes a lot of problems. Absolutely. hundred percent. I mean, how many times have you heard some situation in like Pattaya or Phuket, some oh, foreigner did something stupid while they were drunk, you know? Yeah. You know, if you're if you're a heavy drinker, I mean, you can have fun, but I yeah. think you have to also remember these aren't the same rules in your your home country. And I think it's the binge drinking too, because a lot of guys come here like on two week holidays, they probably drink every day, so their body is just getting alcohol day after day after day, where they just reach a point where, you know, and look, I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't done that. You know what I mean? Like before I used to live in Phuket or. And especially here in Bangkok, you know, I drink for a day or two, two, two or three days. You know, you start getting a bit crazy. So, uh, yeah, you just got to keep your wits about you. But there's always, you know, you can always, always just look up Google what not to do. It's like visiting any country. I wouldn't visit any country without researching what, what I should and shouldn't do before visiting them. Because you can actually save yourself from getting in trouble. Mm. 
I'm going to Cambodia next yeah. week for a few Where weeks. Angkor Wat, Phnom Penh. Pen, yeah, yeah, and uh, I've been there before a few times. It reminds me of Thailand, but it's also different in a lot of ways. Like it, the crime rate is so much higher there. Really? Oh yeah. Like if you have your phone out and you're walking down the street, don't really? run by and grab it and just take off. Like that's probably the most common thing you hear. And oh. I asked some girl, some local girl, like, is this? Do they target foreigners or will anyone? And she said, "Oh no, even me. Like, really? they her phone was stolen twice the previous year. So, and well, they I, th I think the police corruption is quite high there, isn't it? I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, I think. It, well, it's, did you did you feel a lot safer there than you what you would Thailand? Oh, absolutely not. No. It was. I asked people like, "Do you feel safe walking around at night by yourself?" And they all said no. No. But here, I mean, I feel yeah. like there's no, there's no, not that you know things happen here too occasionally but it's at such a low rate like here you can leave your laptop on the front seat of your car no yeah. one's gonna touch it like my friend um when he was in thailand he left by accident left the safe in his hotel room he left it open with like thirty thousand baht in cash just Shit. right there and then the the housekeeper came and she didn't touch it no i think yeah well that's i actually got I got done for 18 grand once. Where? In Phuket. Really? Yeah. Was it locked in the safe or no? No, nah, it was, gee, I was just, it was like when I was first kind of, I think I just moved here. I'd been here for a holiday, but then I moved back here. Um, and I was excited to be back. And I went to the bank and I put money into an envelope and I kind of just threw it next to my bag. And I kind of had a guest come back with me that night, <laughs> back in the day. Um, and like I was just passed out because I was obviously so drunk. I woke up, gone. Um, and that was before, you know, that was before they used to take their IDs and stuff. Yeah. Before they gap to your room. So it's just a learning curve. And, you know, I've never done it since. So Yeah. But it can easily happen. But I think when you go to hotels, I think it's very rare for the hotel stuff. To Probably. But in Cambodia, I don't know. So oh, yeah. a lot of stuff gets stolen there. I mean, I've I've now heard of, multiple multiple situations where people's camera phone whatever got jacked um it, it so how would you how would you compare like the well, obviously you don't drink so you wouldn't know that uh so what about the cost of living do you think Cambodia is a lot cheaper than living in thailand uh, it's i mean okay well we're in bangkok right now and the thing is bangkok is just expensive in general yeah, it's got even, huge even, expensive. even for thailand from my experience phnom penh isn't like so much cheaper i mean some things are transportation is a lot cheaper food to me wasn't really there's less options i think and there's uh like here you can go get something on the street on a street car there's a lot of small thai restaurants there's nicer thai restaurants there's gg we went to phnom penh isn't really like that they have some of everything but it's much less options um and i found it really hard to find a nice hotel there that okay. was like to my standard like i don't yeah. not that my What's standard your, is like let me put it by my by the way by my standard i mean a room that doesn't have bugs doesn't have the drain and the shower backing up you know like stuff like that like basic stuff yeah. even the nicer hotels or it's it's hard it's hard to find so i found one now but so what would you normally spend like when you're traveling what would you like cambodia what would you normally like 50 dollars a night there what's that's, that in thai bar? i normally go. uh like 1000 yeah i think that's 700 amazing. something like that 1500 1700 yeah. that gets you a good room yeah below that it's iffy yeah there are rooms they're okay but maybe they're like very old style like at a guest house yeah. where it's like it's your room that's very small and then some other guy right in, like right next to you and yeah so if you want like a i mean they have the marriott I, do they have a marriott they have that kind of hotel there but, but that'd be fairly expensive wouldn't it you'd be very expensive so from... you might think it'd be like oh it's cambodia so it's going to be cheap not no, really no, no, no. yeah not really well it's a brand so they don't want to like yeah yeah they've got to be careful with that you know they don't want to be like you're not going to be seeing the hilton elf yeah a dirty so <laughs> i met they have a big casino there called naga world yeah i've been there and the casino, i won there actually oh really what do you play five hundred dollars on like poker machines i think years ago mm. well, they, and by the way cambodia they use the u.s dollar mm. they use the u.s dollar and the cambodian and the notes real. have to be perfect oh yeah if you have money that has any kind of crease in it yeah they just, don't want it they won't accept it and they have a scam there where if you give them a 100 hundred dollar bill they swap it with a fake one. They say, oh, no, it cannot take oh, it. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? I've heard of that. So you have to be really careful. Like, 
I even they it happened so frequently. The woman saw me look at the serial number. She yeah. knew what I was doing. I just took a quick glance at the serial number before I gave it to her. Oh, that's a smart idea. And she ID. noticed it, and she actually confirmed with me, like, okay, this one ends in one zero eight, and then, you know, oh, that's smart. Actually, never, did you think of that, or did yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, but tip? honestly, if they switched it, what am I going to do? How are you going to get it back? Because they're probably so quick at switching yeah. it. Um, it's more that you let them know that you know what's what's up, and then they maybe they won't yeah. mess with you. Yeah. Um, but they have like the giant casino there. It's it's nice if you like casinos. Like I have a friend that might want to come with me because he wants to bet on uh, March Madness, the basketball tournament in the U.S. It's oh, like okay. college basketball. Yeah, right. It's this month. Um, but uh, it's also, it seems a bit like the Wild West, like even more than Thailand. A lot mm. of Chinese there. It's that have kind like of Laos, t- I'd imagine, is it? I haven't been. Yeah, Laos is a lot of that. Like I met this girl and... Uh, just playing pool at a bar and she was looking for a phone charger and I happened to have like a you like a power bank with a cable and I saw she had an iPhone so I'm like go oh, here and she said oh and by the way this girl you know <laughs> she's a very nice young lady yeah but she works at one of these fine oh, establishments yeah exactly so she's not making any substantial salary right nah. but she's like oh no you don't have the right one I need uh, I have USB-C iPhone 15. Oh. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh my, I've got I, was a like, third I was like, let me see that. <laughs> really? So like, I, she had a brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max. God. And I'm like, we were saying this earlier too. Like sometimes they'll tell you something and you're like, they, they give you one little piece of information, but maybe they don't realize that you can translate that. And like, this doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. why do you have... A 15 Pro Max, right? That's probably six months salary for some of them. I, I don't know. But so she's like, oh, well, my boss got it for me. Right. I was like, yeah, wait so a second. <laughs> you work at this bar. What do you mean your boss got it for you? Probably a boyfriend that brought it to her so she can keep in contact well, with him. She's like, because I, I just like to dig. Once I uncover something like this, I just deeper? I love digging further because you never know where the, that's gonna go. So she's like, "Oh well, not this boss, my other boss." Oh, okay, I'm like, yeah. okay, so just here we go. Every, so, so, if you so, keep asking them questions, they forget that the digging around well, bullshit. So then she's like, "I'm like, what other boss?" She's like, "Well, he works around the casino." I'm like, interesting. Yeah. So go go on. So she so she basically explained that her side hustle is she meets all these Chinese guys around yeah. Phnom Penh around the bars. She gets their contact. They go to the casino. Inevitably, they lose a lot of money. She, she happens to know a loan shark, so she refers all these Chinese guys to this oh, loan, to shark, loan shark. And she said that she made this guy a hundred thousand U.S. last year. Yeah. So he bought her a phone. Shit, that's good money. Yeah. And just commission, because poker is quite big in Cambodia, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. Because I know a lot of Chinese. I know I've got, I know a guy. He, I wouldn't call it, he's like, he's not a very good friend of mine. He, he is an acquaintance, so. Um, and he's very good at poker. And um, yeah, they used to go to Cambodia and play poker. But it's, it's uh, these underground places. Well, no, I mean, this isn't an underground place. This is like the, the big casino, casino there, um, which caters heavily to the Chinese. Chinese. Um, but this same girl told me she, I, I don't know, I asked her, like, how did you get involved with it? She said she used to be a poker dealer or a, a poker or blackjack, I don't remember, at the casino in Poi Pet, the one near the border of Thailand. Okay. And that burned down. Yeah. And she told me that, and I don't know if this is true, I don't know anything. But she told me that the reason it burned down is because there was some sort of camera. She described it as a camera in the table that can see your cards. And it had like a, a short and it started a fire. <laughs> but I mean, I think she maybe she misunderstands. I don't know if she means like a sensor because they have cards, um, like playing cards that have like, um, what do you, what's the thing in your in your like credit card, the chip? There's like a, a chip in the cards. Oh, yeah, the gold thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when you put it on the table, there's a reader in the table. That's what they use for like televised poker. Okay, That's how they yeah. know what to put on the screen. What, what card's coming up. Yeah. But she, according to her, there was some sort of system like that secretly. And that's what started the fire in the in the whole casino burned down. I think a few people died in that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And, that, and that's why she's working in Phnom Penh now because she lost her job there. 
So I don't know. You meet some interesting people out there. It could be competition. It could be, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I love traveling to places like this and you're just in this, I'm just playing pool and then all of a sudden you're oh, in this kind of conversation. 15, so. Yeah. But you have to learn to notice these little things. Yeah. You know, like I was telling you a story about another fine young woman in Thailand. Uh, she messaged me today. That's why we were talking about her. But her story is she has a fiance in America. And a, a while back, I got into a talk with her and I was like, oh, have you been back to Isan, your hometown, whatever? And she told me, oh, she was just up buying land out there. And I'm thinking, what do you mean you're, you're out buying land? You're building a house. And she's like, oh, no, my boyfriend sent the money. We're building a house and whatever. This girl is not... She's oh, really? not an innocent girl. Oh, yeah, okay. in the bar at four a.m. while her fiance is back in back America. Home, sending the money. Yeah, yeah. That she's all tucked in the bed. Oh no, no, with no. The teddy bear. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, you can't, you can't do that. Oh so, yeah, it's a big risk. But a lot of people like it. But I said to you that that story happens every day. You know what I mean? You just. Uh, unfortunately, guys have got to learn for themselves. I think if you're here for a while and you understand the culture and you know what to look out for, because I'm not saying that every girl is like this. No. But I think if you and I went out, we could way more easily identify who is a risk and who is, you know, less a risk. But, but we've got the experience. So I think experience, it does help. Yeah. It just amazes me when people show up here and they just get way deep into it way fast. Like, I don't, and they wouldn't do that in their normal life. Like, they wouldn't no. go into business that way, you know? No. They can't let leave their brain. But I, I think Thailand does that. And look, it's happened to me. Like, you know, I've, when I first arrived here, like 12 years, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, I think this year, um, 2010, I moved here. You know, I've done some stupid stuff. Um, but it's just a learning curve, really. Like, it's, it's yeah. you know what I mean? But, you know, it, these things happen. The first time you came on here, you told the story how you went to Isam and you like bought the girlfriend's family like a washing machine or something uh, and yeah, a yeah. camera and they like pawned the camera or whatever. I don't know what they did. But have you ever had any other like nightmare situations? Not really. I learned from that mistake. Yeah. I learned. I, um, not really, no. Um, but I hear about it all the time. Um, you know, it's just... You learn. You live and you learn. I've had like crazy, like I've been at dinner on a date with a girl and she'll be like, oh, sorry, one second. I have to take a call. And she'll go on video chat with a guy. And then I'm like, who's that? He's like, oh, that's my boyfriend. He's in whatever European country, you know? She, they say it like it's no problem. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. Does he know that you're sitting at the table? Absolutely not. Like, you nah. know what they do. They do the they thing. Walk. They oh, The tie grows up to video chat people like this. And then they show the background right here. And there's like four dudes r- right <laughs> on the other side of the... Yeah. I see that all the time when I'm out at the bar or whatever. Really? Yeah. So what about... So, you know, how long have you lived in Bangkok now? Five years. And... So you still enjoying it? Yeah, I've never really had a bad experience. Not with a girl, not with like getting robbed, nothing like that. The only thing that's happened to me was I had my phone stolen in a nightclub once. And uh, it was like definitely like a professional operation, I think, because they sent it to some shop in like near Chinatown. And they had this okay. whole elaborate way to so, get your your uh, iCloud info and oh, to really? unlock the phone. Because if they can't unlock the phone, they can't sell it. It's just parts. So it was very sophisticated. And then funny enough, I went back to look at the security footage and the cameras weren't working that day oh, okay, because they were enough. upgrading. Yeah. What, what are the chances? So mm. I, I haven't been, I don't go out these days. I haven't been out for about a year and a half to any clubs or anything. So where where do you go out now in Bangkok? What's where, where's so the happening it's, places? It's changed a lot because more and more things have reopened after COVID, yeah. and then there are even new places that opened. Um, like we were, you know, Sugar on Soy Eleven, the hip hop club. Yeah. So we used to go there a lot because it was one of the first clubs to reopen, and I like hip hop, so it's a nice place. But now I think since the tourists came back more. Less of the locals hang out there. And I don't know. I think in Tong Law, a lot of clubs are opening. But it depends what you like and what kind of vibe you want. I mean, the ones in Ekamai and Tong Law, it's almost 100% Thai. So 
I think a lot of foreigners that come here wouldn't be comfortable in that environment no. unless they were like living here for a long time. But, you know, sugar I like. I brought my friend there. Actually, funny, we got a table, uh, you know, just like the standing table there. And uh, we got there late. We got there like around one. Yeah. And there weren't many tables left. But the staff is like, oh, these people just left. We'll clear that one. Yeah. And we'll we'll give you that one. So we said, okay. And we they set us up, whatever. And like 30 seconds later, these three guys come back. And it was their table. Oh, they right. took the bottle with them. And we're walking around the club with the bottle. Like... They, they were from America, I think. Yeah. You know, I think they thought they were in a rap music video. Oh, okay. If you know what I mean. Like, they yeah. wanted to walk around with the bottle. Hey, all y'all scruples, y'all got to go. We taking over this club tonight. But when they, when you can't take the bottle off the table because then the staff thinks you left. Yeah. So they cleared the table and when they came back, they were basically like, sorry, like, what, you know, it's too were bad. Were cool about it? They looked at me and my friend like... Oh, shit. And we were just like, I don't know, go talk to the staff. Like, we're not, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, you always leave your bottle at the table. I know that. I just thought it was funny that it's like they wanted to, you know, you know, like, I don't know. Guys, I see guys come here in the clubs and they, they act so funny. Maybe it's like where they're from. Like, I don't know what the nightclubs are like in Atlanta. But here, you know, don't show up in basketball shorts and Jordans and like the guy put a towel on his head oh, like really? like towel like like i don't know know what this look is or what but i assume he saw it in like a wiz khalifa video so but here it looks stupid yeah so you look stupid sorry yeah. so yeah i don't know i look i haven't been out for a year and a half and i, I honestly can't i can honestly sit here and say that i haven't i haven't been out to a club or a bar in about a year and a half I'm trying to get um, one of the managers. His name is Mike. He's the manager of at Juicy now. Juicy is the bar. See, what's Juicy? I've never heard of that. Okay, it's a newer place opened in the last two years. It's yeah. a newer... It's on the first floor of Sugar. Yeah. And it's kind of half open air, half like old school hip hop. It's okay. a cool spot. Um, I think they have a live band outside, but I'm, I want to get him on so he can kind of like lay it down. Okay, when you go out to these places... This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is how you act. Don't yeah. do this. Avoid this. You know, that girl at the bar, she doesn't really like you. She just wants your money. So, yeah. like, that kind of thing. But then they're going to kill their, their clientele, aren't well, they? No, it's not that. What about but- that other place in Secret 11? It's down the end. It used to be next to the Villa Mart there. Uh, oh, what was it called? Havana Insomnia Social? Or? Oh, um, yeah. Insomnia? Insomnia? Or is it the green one? It's like... yeah. Behind the village market there. Yeah, it's closed. Is that, is that there? It's yeah, closed. I, I don't know why. I, I I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I... I think they got done for drugs or something. I, I'm not saying. I don't think it was... Th- at least what I read was that they tried to do some renovation, but they couldn't get the permit or something oh, okay. like, no something like that. Their license, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. But I heard that they're going to be opening somewhere else okay. or they're building something else. But to be honest, right now, I feel like there's too many options and... Even on like a weekend night, I feel like a lot of places are pretty thin. Are they like it? So, so what's tonight? Saturday night, right? So yeah. If I said okay, tonight let's go out. Um, but I want to, you know, I want. Is it? Uh, where would you take me? Well, it depends what you like because if you wanted to go to a place that I can guarantee you is going to be full, yeah, it would be Route sixty six okay. in the RCA area. But the thing with that is. There's it's, a lot of Thai students there. It's there. mostly Thai oh, or yeah. Korean. A lot of Thai and Korean. Yeah. And it's all like the standing around a table thing. And yeah. it's, I know, sometimes I'm okay with it. My friend likes it, but sometimes I don't really, like I would like a place like Sing Sing Theater much better, yeah. which is more of like a Western style dance floor, DJ, that whole thing. But, you know, there's certain nights that like Sing Sing, I think the good nights are like Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I don't know about... Because Tuesday is Models Night, yeah. Which I think, if you're a model, <laughs> they give you free drink tickets. Oh God! Uh, Thursday is Ladies Night. Are, are they really models? No, or they are. Just... They are. Yeah. I I went there once. <laughs> wait, wait, ready for <laughs> you're this? a model too? No, no, no. <laughs> I went there once, and I went to the bar to order a drink, and the bartender asked me for my ticket, and I said, "What ticket?" He thought I was. Oh, I thought you were a model. Yeah, I was like, no, 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 no. You pass off as a model? No, 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 no. Um, um, but, uh, so that's Tuesday, Thursday night is ladies night. So it's always busy because the yeah. girls get free drinks and then, uh, Friday, Saturday is the weekend. So okay. I like it there. It's a good setup. It's a good vibe, but I think, um, there was, 
Yeah, I think I, if I was going to get anywhere, it'd probably be Sing Sing. Only because, but look, I, you know, I, I wouldn't even go there. I just the thought of me going out to a club these days, especially, you know, I'm in like my well, depends mid-40s. why you're going. Well, I'm just over it. Like it's just I've just done it for years, and it's just I think it was like when I hit. It would have been about a year and a half ago. You know, I just hit this. I was like, ah. Oh. I think I went out one night. as just like music and... Boof, well, I boof, guess you're boof. not coming to Pattaya with us because... Oh, look, maybe I'll think about it. But, like, I haven't been out in Hua Hin out to one bar in a year and a half. Um, well, uh, in Pattaya, we went to Mist, which is a long walking street. I like it because I like the music there. Yeah. It's like a lot of hip hop. Um, but it's interesting because they open at, I don't know what time, nine or 10 and they go until like seven in the morning Yeah, crazy. and you'll see these waves of people. Like first it's the older guys, the mongers who come like yeah. 11 to and then one. By one and then they, they have this, is their bedtime. So they have to go to sleep. Yeah. And then around four, if you can hold out that long guys, it's pro tip here around four, all the bar girls swarm the place because they all get off work I and they all want to go party. Yeah, yeah. And guess what, guys? If you're in there at four and <laughs> you're, you're paying know, that bar fine. Well, yeah, there's no bar fine. So, yeah, it's just, uh, well, that, that tip's been around for ages. Not that I'd know, but. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't know anything <laughs> about that. So, and then there, and then they finished, they closed that at seven. And I met this guy there, not this, a few months ago when we were there, I met this guy italian guy living in pattaya and he's like oh you want to go to the after party this is at seven in the morning yeah and then i'm like okay so the doors open it's like bright sunlight like you have to shield your eyes because you you've been inside all night and uh there's a bar outside with the loudest music really? you've ever heard in your life like it is painfully loud Crazy. and every bar girl there's like 50 bar girls and like three guys the three guys that made it through the night. Yeah. All at this bar outside and the music is blaring and they all know each other. They all see each other well, every night. they probably night. do it every single day. Yeah, right? they do. And then that's why when I walked in, everybody's looking like, who's this, who's guy? this guy? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Naked on the block. But it's just, it's fascinating because like that lifestyle, you're up all night, every night, drinking like every day. Mm. And then you go to bed at what, nine in the morning, wake then up at 6 p.m. Wake up at 6, do it all again. Yeah. But the the one thing that I find quite interesting is that, you know, you don't drink. So it amazes me how you can go to all these clubs. Because I don't think I could go to a club and not drink or you, a bar. You could if you went 100 times sober. Yeah. But, would, but you just, people rely too but you've much got to, on... But you've got to be able to go once without drinking. Yeah. Well, I've... So if you guys don't know, I've, I don't drink alcohol. I've never had a drink. And my business in the U.S., uh, is like entertainment, nightclubs, concerts, that kind of thing. So I'm in this environment all the time. Yeah, so you're used to it. And, yeah. you know, I think especially when you work behind the scenes, yeah. you, and you, see what it, you uh, don't drink as much because the people that drink, they look stupid. Mm. Not, you know, not saying that you would look super stupid if no, you had no, a drink. No, no, that's not that at all. But when you're in that environment all the time, and especially when you work there, the people you come into contact with are not the normal people. You come into contact with the people that just get completely wasted and embarrass themselves and then, you know, dragged out of them. So I don't, I don't think I could be around that sober because it would just do my head in. Especially yeah. like, you know, you are saying you and Pattaya to 7 a.m. sober. Like, yeah. how do you do that? <laughs> I That's think, just crazy. I think the only reason I can do that is because I'm not heavily drinking. Yeah. Because I'd want to die if I was if I was hung over and then tried to, yeah. But just... Uh, like the thought of me going to a club tonight and not drinking, I'd think, oh, what am I here for? Yeah. But well, I have a friend that um, he does. He he drinks a tiny bit sometimes, not a lot. Yeah. But a lot of times, if we go out, he'll order apple juice, and he orders apple juice because it, uh, looks, it looks like, like it looks like whiskey. yeah. Because I think he doesn't want people to know. Whatever, yeah. it's fine. I don't personally. I don't care if you know. Um, yeah, I've got a friend that runs a few clubs, and he does the same. Yeah. He puts like say. You know, just just walk around with a coke. I, I, and I gotta say, guys, I've never had a girl judge me for not drinking. negatively for not drinking. Oh, that's In good. fact, if they figure out, because a lot of times they don't even realize it, if they figure out that I'm not drinking, I feel like they have more respect for you. Yeah. Because they think like, "Well, oh, this guy is in a." Do you think that some people might think you're on drugs? 
Cause me? Like, no, 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 not, no. But because you know, if you if you see that guy at clubs every single time you see him, and the only time you see him, he's holding a bottle of water. You you're probably thinking to yourself, "Well, I'm not usually holding a bottle of water. I oh, have okay. like Red Bull or some oh, other okay, something yeah. else." So um, if you don't know, you probably just assume right. it's whatever. Okay. But, well, I assume that you're going out. You're just holding water, and no. But so, even at the end of the night, I'll get water. Sometimes people say something. Why you drink water or whatever? Yeah, and the I, pain I, is I just I just say because I'm trying to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Do you have you been off of drugs while you've been in Thailand? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Where in? Uh, where? But like Bangkok. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. What anything you want? No, I don't. I I don't do drugs. Well, I don't drink. I it. don't even smoke. No. Nah. I don't do anything. I'm no that's fun. Good. Yeah, that's very good. But I, I that's I think that's one of the reasons that I've survived here five oh, years. Yeah. Because if you come here and you like a lot of that stuff, it's well, like you were saying before, like um, you've never had any problems. Um, you know, you said it before. You said that your phone got stolen once. Yeah. Um, the biggest reason why you probably haven't had any problems is because you haven't been under the influence of either alcohol, drugs, or anything else. And, you know, I think most of the time when people do have problems, they're either being drunk or they're on drugs or... But you don't put yourself into that situation. So I think that's maybe why... Is the reason that you probably haven't had any problems. You know, you don't get into fights. Um, you know, no one tries ripping you off. Oh, we've, we've had some fights. Oh, uh, really? Oh, yeah. What, like, probably like four or five, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. What in Bangkok? Oh yeah. Where? Who oh yeah. Tell me this. Uh, at some bars. What, punch up. And what I've it? noticed is it's always the same pattern. I think no, no, I'll tell you. Fun. Oh yeah. Uh, it's well, usually the Ferengs, obviously. Oh yeah. Never Thai people will never, unless you really do something bad. God, I would never have thought you would be like. Oh yeah, people. Have, well, you know what it is. It's not me. It's the girl I'm with. Okay. If you're with someone that is particularly good looking yeah as it gets later in the night the guys get drunk and i think they get frustrated yeah. because they don't have anyone and uh it, it could be anything that sets them off god that shocked me yeah well oh, i've gotten hit in the face i've gotten i've i take it on back at first well that guy well that one in particular it was a very packed club yeah. and i was walking by him and uh he accidentally stepped on my foot, yeah. but he, I couldn't lift my foot up and I almost tripped. And when I tripped, I fell into him yeah. because he stepped on my foot okay. and he, I don't know what he thought. And he went and he hit me right in the face and then I hit him in the face. And then really? now it's, now everybody's trying to hold him back and I'm just standing there. Yeah. Cause like, he's, I mean, this, this guy was like, I don't Paralytic. know, he was older. Mm. He was, I don't know, 50. What am I going to do with this guy? Overweight 50 year old guy? Like, it's, you know. So, uh, can you fight? Like, well, yeah. It's been okay so far. Yeah. Uh, no, I go to the boxing gym. Oh, okay. And before, yeah. actually, forget that. Before I came to Thailand, I was into jujitsu. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there was actually a situation at a bar here where these two foreigners got into a fight over something and over some girl or something. And one of them didn't really want to get into it. And the other one was antagonizing it. And what I noticed, and this is a warning to all you guys, if you think security in these clubs is going to help you, no. they are so... At least I don't know you. They're so laid back here. Like, they, a lot of the stuff here is like security theater. They, they're there to make you feel better. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, you're on your own. Oh, it depends. If, you're, if, if that club knows you and like you, oh, yeah, well, you're a good customer. I got a whole thing about this. So in this particular situation, I was there... I was at the this bar, which I won't name, with a girl, and um, these two other guys like got into it, and we're just watching, and the security pulled them apart, and then the first guy broke free, and he went at him again. Yeah. Security pulled them apart, he broke free again, and, and I'm thinking, how can security not get, th this guy was young, he was probably mid-20s, late-20s, in shape. But not like a huge guy. He, you know, he definitely works out, but he's not like six foot tall. And after like the third time, four security guys on this dude, pulling him out. And I just said to like this girl, if he breaks free again, it's gonna be chaos because now he's gonna go through 
all the other people in this club, a lot of which I know, they're they're like friends or acquaintances of mine. Yeah. And other people are going to get hurt for sure. And so I said, I'll be right back. So I went, the security was pulling him out and he broke free again. Oh, nice. And when he broke free this time, he took one step and then I just choked him out. Oh, really? Just done. Yeah. God. I, he didn't I even know it that. was so fast. And then here's the thing. I had him, it was on the ground. He can't move. He's completely immobilized. And security runs over. Like the security is shocked. Security runs over and I think they're going to take him away. No, they start kicking him. I'm, he's, <laughs> he's basically pat unconscious yeah. on the ground. I'm holding him. And instead of the security taking him away, they're kicking the shit out of him. Well, he's made them lose face. Yeah. And then, by, and then, by getting away for three I times. Was like, so. Yeah. So that, that was one. But usually it's something with a, involving a girl and alcohol. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go, people. I wouldn't have thought that you could choke oh, people no. out. There's and... been... No, and then he, but here's a pro tip. If you go out to a place, if I go out to a place, especially if I'm with a good looking girl or from with a group of people and I know we're going to get messed with, I'll tip whatever oh, security yeah, yeah. is nearest to us, a hundred yeah, yeah. bot. Yeah. That hundred bot yeah, is same, like yeah. buying, yeah. you know, Putin's yeah. security team. Yeah, exactly. Because at that point, when, when when that happens, like we'll go to, this happened when we were in Pattaya. Um, there was, uh, my friend and I were at the table and these other clearly Taurus young guys, not trying to hate on them, but they're very drunk and very obnoxious, came next to us. And I looked at my friend and I looked at the security and I just walked over and gave him a hundred. <laughs> and for the rest of the night, that guy was Super. our personal security. Yeah. If they came too close to us, he told them to get back and whatever. And you know, m it makes your it life is, a lot easier. It used to be like that when I used to, when I lived in Bangkok, there's a place called Mix. Is that still there? Mix? I don't know. Oh, Mix? Yeah. Oh, Mix. Mix. I might've been there the other night, yeah. but don't, don't okay, tell anyone. Yeah. Well, I went there. I, I used to go there and you know, I tip the security guy, but they used to like to stand around. People would come up and they're like, eh. but I don't know. I've never really had any, look, I've been in Thailand now for 14 years and I've never had one fight. I don't think. I think it happens to me more often because I'm a, you're, with, I'm you're a, with a hot girl probably. And I'm a smaller guy. No, I don't like I'm, because I, I, I had another situation where, um, I was out with someone and it was late in the night, like late, like after hours late. Like three in the morning, three thirty. People are drunk. They're frustrated because you know these guys. Everyone wants to meet a girl, whatever. And this guy tries to talk to the girl I'm with, and she's not interested. And then he comes, tries to come up to me and do the whole like, "Hey, bro, where are you from?" I'm like, "I know why you're t talking to me <laughs> because you want to talk." So I just like you know, whatever. Just go back. Over. He got so offended, really? so offended. Yeah, but whatever. It's. I guess when you're drunk, you lose your sense but I, of... I think it can happen, like, fighting in clubs and that. It can happen anywhere in the world, can't it, really? It happens in America, yeah. happens in But Australia. I'll say, I'll never, I'll never start a fight. Never. No. Never. No, I, don't, so. I, don't, I wouldn't imagine that. You know, yeah. you're not that kind of person. When you don't drink, I think, I think most of the time when people start fights, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, alcohol is involved. Yeah, of so, course. So, you know... It's, yeah. a, it's like a fire, isn't it? Like what? Alcohol. I mean, like, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, it's, there you go. Yeah, but if you keep putting more fire, putting more petrol on the fire, uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna explode again. Especially here, because when people visit Thailand, like you can go out and be drinking from eight mm. p.m. to eight in the morning, and I have a feeling most people aren't doing that in their home country. No. So the rules uh, go out the window. And I know, yeah, most of the time you said that you've got hot girls with you. Yeah. So that probably doesn't help. It doesn't. No. Yeah. yeah. It, because the Thai girls are so nice. Like they won't reject you hard. No. And these guys think because she's not giving me a very strong signal, there's a chance. Mm -hmm. And there's no chance. So, I mean, you know, a lot of the time. So, and then when they see them maybe with someone else, you know, it, it gets messy. Yeah, but look, I'll, I don't miss. Like I by look, I'm not gonna say here I didn't have fun, but wait, but I get a question. Some is over here. Yeah. You're saying you've never been out in a year some, and a half. So no, I'm saying you've never been out with her, and no guy has ever like said something to her or like not really, no, no, really, yeah, hmm. okay. But we've I think I'm we've shocked. only been out a few times. Okay. 
We've never really been out to Bangkok. We might have gone to Sing like, Sing once or twice. I, I was at Sugar once, and uh, I was with a lady, and I saw these young uh, foreigner, I don't know, American, European, whatever, and they're looking over at us. And I know what they're looking at. And I was going to go to the bathroom. So I walked away, and then I waited 10 seconds. And I saw the guy come over. He waited until uh, I walked really? away. And right when he got to the table, I was right back there. And I was like, bro. I said it just like this. I was like, bro, I want you to get the fuck over there. <laughs> and I don't want you to see you over here again. He was just so shocked. Like, where yeah. did this guy come from? And he just walked away. Yeah. But I'm surprised that like things like that don't happen to you because... You yeah, know. We don't go out. Some probably goes out once a month, if that. I don't have been out for you. And I think we've been out twice, maybe three times in Bangkok. But uh, we go to places like Sing Sing. Or like, but it's normally like, you know, she goes, oh, well, you, you, we'll drink when we're going Speaking home. of Sing Sing, you know who I went to Sing Sing with? Uh, you remember Nikki? Oh, David Bonzix. No, you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Nikki and I went to dinner at Oscar. Yeah. And when we were at Oscar. When Os- was this? This was two years ago. Okay, yeah. Yeah. When we were at Oscar, there were these guys sitting at the table next to us. And I remember them because he had a, like a funny shirt on, like a pineapple print shirt or something like that. And then coincidentally, these guys were also at Sing Sing when we were there. Okay. And uh, this guy <laughs> stops her. I, w- I, was in, I was at the table, but she was walking to the bathroom. The guy stops her and is like, oh, can I get her, you get your info, whatever. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, he just saw you, her yeah, yeah. with someone and it didn't, doesn't even care. Yeah. No, I think a lot of guys come to Thailand and they just assume that every single girl out <laughs> is either single or, or a hooker. Maybe. She was in particular, like her look. Yeah. If you know Nikki, mm. like a magnet. Yeah. And, you know, she's a good looking girl, but we're in Bangkok. Like it's, they're everywhere. But for whatever reason, it was like, it was almost a headache to go out. There were yeah. so many people yeah, right. coming up. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So good luck to that yeah. new boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, it'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Well... It's getting late now. Yeah. You got to drive back to Hui Hin. Are you ready to go home, Sam? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, come back here. Come back. Come back. Come on in, Sam. Are you ready? What time is it now? We'll be home by midnight. Is, so, Johnny, yeah. is Johnny a good driver? Oh. Sometimes he's <laughs> Do you ever drive? No, she can't drive. You don't drive? She's getting a license soon, though. Okay, I have a Thai license now. Oh, I got a Thai you license. You can drive us home, then. Uh, no, I think I'm, <laughs> I could sleep wherever your dog sleeps, the little do- next to your dog. Yeah, and now we're gonna. Um, but that was fun today. So Happy massage. So yeah. the video will so be out tomorrow, I'll, hopefully. I'll post Johnny's video from the massage place down below if you want to check that out. It's pretty funny. If you want to find Johnny on YouTube, it's Johnny. There's something happening. If you guys are coming to Bangkok Suit or Thailand, you're thinking of moving here, you want to know all the tricks in the nightclubs. Hit the subscribe button. We've got so many more videos coming out, and I want you to see everything. Until then, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thanks for watching. <laughs>